phone's ringing. I'll pick it up in a second. It's really not that weird when it comes to that because of the fact that people now are making these relationships online. The world's getting so much smaller. And now, back then, maybe you rewind five, six years ago, you tell somebody, oh, I'm meeting somebody who I met off Skype. But now today, it's not so weird versus back then you kind of were a little outcasted by that, which it, it, it was strange. But now people are doing business. People are, you know, sharing ideas online, doing all types of great things online because it, it's evolved to the point where I don't know if you guys have seen the Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, I saw the beta of it and it has this thing called Skype VR where what they're trying to do is Skype where you could see the person's silhouette in front of you. And hmm. that that blew my mind. I was like, I read up on it on TechCrunch. I was like, you got to be kidding me! You you you. This is to be a joke or something. But I you know I believe when I see it. But it's uh you know Austin's absolutely right, man. Right now, you know, getting in depth and getting to know your people today is not as strange as rewind the clock six years ago. I was like, you want to get to know what? But dude, you're only online with me. That's no longer the case. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? That app can do. What do you mean? Oh, uh, uh, I'm talking about the Microsoft HoloLens. Um, it's the uh, – oh, are you talking to me or – Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's – you know, you have these Oculus Rift and yeah. similar kinds of things that are, are VR, mm-hmm. surround video, all that kind of stuff. And Microsoft, of course, has has joined the game. Oh, and okay. they, have a, they have a product now that's going to be tied into Skype where you can wear a particular thing like this and – You'll, you're like 3D Skyping. You could do it with a cell phone now too. I mean, I see people, you know, with instructions how to build your cardboard box. And I think one of the yeah. websites is Little Star, L-I-T-T. Flip the cell phone yeah. right in here. Flip yeah. that up. And the cameras now that actually will shoot on phone, guys. Hold on. 360 video, the, they're down to under $300 you can get. You can actually get a, a cameras that do that now. So. Wow, yeah. I saw one for the cell phone even clicks on the cell phone on the top and I think it just rotates around. But for me as a photographer, that's interesting because it's a whole new, you know, kind of realm of, of where, you know, I could uh, pr- possibly profit and, you know, doing that kind of photography. But, you know, even on the, I think it's the Google camera has it built into the, the sphere where you can actually just move from one to the next. And as it hits the dots, it takes the pictures and then posts it all together for you. So pretty crazy. You know, don't really need the cameras where you can camera. take and change the focus after the picture has been taken. I, yeah, yeah there's a lot of really pretty, pretty nuts. Stuff out there, so. All right, I'm back. Have to grab my phone. Sorry about that. He's back. Who? And Grant just actually just went on Periscope. He he got off here, and uh, I follow Grant on Periscope. He just logged on Periscope. Oh well. Yeah. yeah Probably well, got sick again. Yeah, kicked off. three or four times here. We appreciate the effort, and uh, yeah, what, whatever. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you gentlemen do, if I can ask? I know I'm new in the channel. I don't really know exactly. Where do you live at, by the way? Who wants to go first? Uh, I'm a photographer and a graphic designer, kind of uh, web design, kind of stuff like that, but mainly photographer out of California, Santa Barbara. Nice, nice. You, sir? I I give away money to uh, people on the street. I just... (laughs) Homeless advocate. Homeless advocate. There we go. No, I, I, I'm an advertising guy for the most part. So I was a, a broadcast producer, writer, copywriter, and now I work on more complex issues, uh, let's just put it that way. And then I also do voiceover. So if you've played a video game, there's a good chance you've heard my voice. You sound very familiar because I am a gamer at times. Uh, any popular games recently you've uh, added your voice to? League of Legends, Lotro, Spider-Man, uh, mm-hmm. Twisted Metal. Uh, Socom Navy Seals, uh, yeah. Left for Dead, Dead Space. I played Dark Left for Dead. Inferno, uh, you can tell he, by his voice, he mainly does the female parts, so sometimes it's a little oh, difficult to. Yeah. Oh no, zombies! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't want to hear my zombie voice. That's kind oh, of, oh no. There's a hell out of people. <laughs> <laughs> That was extremely impressive. Uh, I want I want to record that and just scare the shit out of people. Just uh, so, so, somebody went, "What the hell? We just lost like fifty viewers." All yeah, I know. They're like, Whoa. <laughs> A couple of people are. Whoa. I'm assuming so. You did that one for Left for Dead. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how that's the zombies right. sound like, and I'm thinking, you know, Left for Dead they just run out. You, you're like, okay, I, I think they're done. They're, oh my god! Oh my god! They just start shooting at them. 
it's and crazy. in Doom, I'm the monsters in Doom. If you go in the room and oh, oh, you gotta do. I, see, I know Doom. You gotta do that one because that I'll remember. <sighs> yep. yep. Oh my, that's freaky. Oh my god, he's he's right. You're, you're, awesome. somebody, your cat's freaking out. I'm freaking out. Okay, so, <laughs> that explains a lot. The hell with your cat. My, I'm freaking out. So wow, I know so it's that. funny. I have these these like two totally different lives where I can go in one day and I'm talking about like uh, uh, trying to establish <laughs> touch points in terms of you know corporate responsiveness to millennial workforces, and then the next day I'm like, uh, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to where we go. Yeah, so <laughs> stupid voices and things. Nice man, nice. Uh, Austin, Austin doesn't even want to say what he does. He's like, oh man, my oh, life is not that cool. <laughs> oh, I was just waiting. Um, I used to run a branding and digital marketing agency. I've helped my clients make over two million dollars in revenue. Now I'm running a business and lifestyle blog, teaching people basically my information. And yeah, that's that's what I do. It's fun. You got a new book out or something, right? Yeah, I just launched uh, my first audio book, which is pretty awesome. It's called The Inner Entrepreneur Bootcamp, How to Win the Inner Game of Business. I very much love anything personal development because I've learned the more I invest in myself, the better I do in business, the better I do in life. You know, uh, this was just my personal journey. Ooh, lots of lots of sharing. Thank you, everybody, for sharing. Sorry. It's well, no. <laughs> Somebody's uh, muting me. Uh-oh. <laughs> Mute <laughs> Well, I think the zombies. What about are, you, Charles? What do you do? Oh, me, I, I, I wear many a hat. Uh, actually, I'm a field training manager for T-Mobile, so I train a lot of new hires down here in the southeast. Part time, I'm an adjunct professor at a local community college. I teach communications and principles That's of cool. business. And uh, on the other part time, with whatever time I have left, I am a public adjunct public speaker. So I go down to different leadership conferences, mostly talk to college students about college completion what to do after college, uh, taking leadership roles while in college. I have, I've had plenty myself that's made, made my college journey um, not, I wouldn't say irregular, but completely different. Some people go to college just that. Through college, I've traveled to like 48 different places, have many positions, you know, met Obama twice, been, uh, got a recommendation nice. for Al Gore, you know, things like that. That was all through college. I, all I had to do was, you know, sign an application to start college back at the community college level, and thus the journey began. Yeah, I so feel like this I, is the generation of having to have multiple skills. Like my old business card just yes. said "Moderns Man, Handyman." You know what I mean? It's like here I'm doing web design, photographer. Then I'm out doing tours. It's just yeah. like everyone's all over the place. It's like yeah. that old Saturday Night Live skit: "Me the me the dog catch, me the plumber, me the." Well, here's a question, then, Charles. Since, since you're uh, uh, you you do work for for T-Mobile, do they make you sign policies, read policies, or whatever? talking about um, the internet or social media, about what you can say, what you can't say? Do they tell you to be careful, no. you know, that kind of stuff? No, just not, not just uh, I only only with uh, things that things or plans that are about to come out. But either than anything current, no, I'm opinionated on it. I mean, obviously, you know, let's, uh, let's call it professional etiquette. If I were to say T-Mobile, I just work for them, but they stink, then obviously there will be uh, action. But no, they're actually good. I have the service uh, right now. I just I have the jump on the man program, which makes sense. Mm. You know, I have a, I have a six S plus, and I just lease it. So when the seven comes out, I just swap it, swap it, swap it. And I have the latest tech in my hand all the time. No, well, I'm just yeah, curious exactly. because a lot of the people here, I, I'm really not really meeting people that work for large corporations here, and I'm just really curious when a person does work with a large corporation, is that corporation? Um, discussing with them or, you know, in codes of conduct or, or company policy, uh, are they asking them to refrain from talking about things on the internet or, or any of that kind of stuff? Well, I'm just really curious what's yeah. going on out there. Okay. No, just, oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go okay, ahead. I was just going to say as one example, um, there's an individual on here who used to do a lot of YouTube comedy and um, it was you know, something that probably your brand would not want to have and something like that. And this individual actually started working for T-Mobile. And I do know from him that he decided to um, kind of rest in peace his old um, Twitter handle, um, etc. Uh, remove a lot of that content now that he is working for that company just for the sake of it. I don't know if he was directly asked to do so, but um, I do know that it definitely in the long run wouldn't have been something that would look good on his record for the company. I can tell you 
from my experience, the larger brands are very much conservative and slow when it comes to adapting things like live streaming. The, the fact that Jeff Goldberg and Brian Fonzo and Vince, Le Ch Vince and, and all of them got together and did the, the campaigns that they've done is phenomenal that a brand like Applebee's would embrace new technology. It goes to show there are a few out there, but most are very, very nervous and conservative. Like they're, they're afraid they'll lose sponsors. They're afraid they'll get sued. They're afraid, they're afraid, they're afraid, which makes them very hesitant and slow. I mean, let's look at it. Even, even things like Panera, I actually, I just met uh, one of the four uh, people running Panera's social media and they were just really starting to adopt Instagram in its native culture because they just don't know. They're, they are so slow. It's a bunch of CEOs who are, and I don't mean any offense to any of the CEOs who are in here, but the old white haired, you know, baby boomer type generation who are just very, very slow. And there's nothing against baby boomers. There are a ton that are adopting social media. I'm not trying to slam them. I'm just throwing a stereotype out because it's the easiest way to identify uh, everybody that is like that in that mindset. And so those larger corporations are very hesitant to get on live streaming. I've talked to them. I've tried to set things up and they just don't understand it. They don't understand why they need to do it. It's not, and you're right. It's not there yet on both aspects. Uh, uh, Je uh, Jens Oliver, just to yes. uh, Jens, there we go. Jens Oliver, just to uh, to rectify that, it's uh, I don't think we're there yet with live streaming. Where now there are specific clauses that say, oh, by the way, if you engage in live streaming, you are not to say this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're there yet. I think we may be at a point where companies will say. Hey, you know, if you have a social media verbata or you have a lot of thought, like my Periscope has like 2,300. It's a pretty good following. You know, I, I go on there. Um, a lot of people recognize me, things like that. And the thing is that I feel that we're not there yet that has gone so serious. I think you have to be like somebody like Grant who has like a huge following on Periscope, things like that. But I think it's a catch-22 because if you have such a – huge following on social media that literally will become your job based on whatever revenue you because i'm a google partner i i get like a good just off my views like what, Charles, what do you call a, a, a huge because i'm i'm still in advertising and i work in product placement and sponsorship so what do you call a huge following on periscope well it, it, when i say a huge oh, following it's, it's what, amanda huh amanda she has yeah four hundred thousand. Amanda Oleander, that would be a okay. huge. So uh, at, right at that kind of a number, yes, we're looking at product placement. We're looking at support, whatever. Well, and you does that translate to in per scope? How many of those four hundred thousand on average do you think are in in each scope? She gets like uh, seven hundred to a couple of thousand. The one yeah, that I've been about, in pretty consistently. About. You know, you don't need four hundred thousand to get product placement. Uh, my mm -hmm. Girlfriend is a mini Instagram influencer and she only has 5,000 followers. She just has a great account that's very active and engaged and people are reaching out to her. You know, I've talked to a couple of different businesses about being in my Periscopes and Meerkats because, well, one, I know how to sell these things, but two, because my audience is engaged. You know, Brian right. and Jeff and, uh, and some other people I know in this industry are getting brands reaching out to them. So it's more just a matter of create great content consistently, build your niche, become an influencer, and then it will come to you. Does yeah, that yeah, I get it. Absolutely. I only have uh, almost 1,500 followers on Twitter, about 600 here, and then Meerkat, I completely stopped, and I actually just had the first company reach out to me. It's not the biggest uh, editing software company for photos, but it is a software company for photography um, that I'm in talks with right now. Is that going to change the way I act on here? No, because I feel like that's the reason they contacted me in the first place is because I'm natural and you know not really filtered in a sense. We'll find out, I guess, in the long run, but um, you know, that that's that was really surprising to me because I always looked at these accounts with 50,000 followers and stuff, and I'm like, wow, these guys must be getting all this hey, stuff Robert. and all that, but it's achievable at a smaller level, too. 
let me let me share something with you. Um, I did a, a presentation for American Marketing Association, FIU's chapter in FAU, where I actually did a co uh, presentation on social media's impact on marketing in the world today. Uh, the one at FIU, I did it with Jesse Smiles from Vine. And the one at FAU, I did it with Andrew Batcher, King Batch. And um, you look at these two individuals, right? Who were they in, who were they December 2012? Now, why do I say December 2012? December 2012, Vine did not come out yet, right? Vine was uh, an idea, things like that. It didn't actually hit iOS App Store until January 3rd, 2013. These two individuals downloaded it, uh, did a couple of interesting things on it. Now, uh, if you look at how much they're worth, King Batch is worth 2.4 million. He's now going he, movies. He's st- around with people like Marlon Wayne, things like that. And he was working at a Walmart in Tallahassee re- as a recent grad from F- F- Florida State University. Jesse Smiles was working down here in Miami. I know her personally, and she was working at a tanning salon as the receptionist going to Miami Dade College. Now she does a lot of product branding. She just bought a house out in LA all through social media. It literally in the span of months changed these two individuals' lives. It's uh, this, the thing, and they're in the millions. They're, um, Jesse's like at 3.8 million and Andrew Bachelor on Vine is at a whopping 16.8 million. Now, what does that do? Because on that one application, whatever this guy touches is gold, is YouTube, Periscope, everything. Uh, on Periscope, he signed up at one point. And within a week, he already had 85,000 followers. It's, you know, it's that boom you create on that one application, which you're known for to just, and it just spans out. Like people um, who are like Periscope itself has caused my, the rest of my social media to expand a bit more. So it's just where, wherever you lay that impact ground, that, that is what in social media, what will happen and will let you really grow. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at all these retweets and all that stuff, all these mentions like these are, I mean, just causing cloud scores to go out of the roof. Not that cloud scores are the most important thing in the world, but like I don't think I would have reached 60 if it wasn't for Meerkat and this over, you know, a short period of time because I'm not out there tweeting 50 times a day. But if, you know, if there's people with constantly with your name in there, you know, sending it all over the place, it's going to make you more visible on the platform. And just because someone said on the side that nobody from big corporations participates in their social media, um, you know, we have Charles here from T-Mobile. John Ledger, I think, is a great example of someone who, um, you know, runs their own social media. You can email the dude and he'll email you back within a couple of days or you tweet him and, and he'll get back school. at you. And that's him, not some social media team, you know. So uh, there's definitely those guys out there and they're respected. And so is Blab. I mean, you know, we have Furcon in here and people and, you know, these guys are are the you know heads of this company, which is, you know, potentially going to grow into a multi-million dollar huge company and they're in here actively participating in the creation you know not just of the content but also you know listening to us and seeing how how we want to improve the platform so i don't think it's fair to say that these people you know don't participate i think that they're actually on the way up of participating because they're seeing how important it is to to, you know put that face on there and actually you know legitimately be present and and show themselves and not be hiding behind the company name or some sort of a team that you know they can always pass the responsibility uh for whatever happens off to somebody else absolutely gentlemen before you continue i actually got to run some errands but thank you for having me here on your panel this has been a great discussion yeah, thanks for joining uh, thanks for yeah here. i'm gonna be blabbing a little more uh guys um, i'm actually waiting for the announcement on a story I, i'm trying to Get one of those super Surface Pro Four devices. So I'm waiting on the one of those. Uh, so, yep, October six is the announcement from Microsoft. I was watch uh, the latest tech. What's going on? Um, everybody, everybody, guys, thank you, all the viewers. Be sure to follow me. And guys, thank you for having me on. Yep, yeah. follow us too. Have a good day. Nice to meet you. So, Namaste. So here's something I've noticed uh, with the launch of of all these social medias, but in particular Blab. And I'm actually learning this from Robert. It's not about uh, getting that 200,000 follower count or whatever. It's about creating the one-on-one relationships, but building a small community. Blab here is extremely powerful. There might be 2,000 active, really active users, but if you connect with those 2,000 users, when you put a blog article out, when you make a YouTube video or something like that, and you let them know, they're there to support you. And as we support each other, we're all gaining very fast. And I believe personally that the grassroots uh, community building is really where the power is because 
as we get to know each other and support each other, we're all going to grow. And I mean, yeah. what more do we want? You know, that's how we get the big brands coming to us. Do our X, Y, Z. Which is why the people that are trying to sell at you here stand out really quickly because the odd, that type of audience just isn't here yet. You know, whether it's time out your product and letting people know about it, that's what it's all about. Because then, you know, somebody asks for some marketing or something, then I might pass them off and be like, hey, you know, Austin over here, he's got a great ebook out or whatever else. Like, or, you know, someone might need a photographer in California and Austin's like, hey, I know Yen's over in Santa Barbara, you should call him. And, you know, that's what really the power of this is. And, and that team, right, that collaboration that's, you know, going to drive us all kind of to the next level versus one person trying to you know get all of us to you know kind of take do what they say or or, or buy their product or whatever else but yeah i completely agree with you I, Hello, David. I have no problem with people selling on any of these platforms i'm a big proponent on selling especially when there's people in front of you because every single one of my products that i have i fully back and i think it's one of the greatest products out there so if it fills the need and you can help somebody, totally do it. But it's not about selling every single person in the room. It's about presenting, hey, I have this ebook. Hey, I have this Instagram guide. Hey, I have X, Y, and Z. And then it's also about building these relationships. I think you need the mix, personally. For me, I think it's a big part Style. of remembering this is not J.S. Gilbert blab. This is blab. And I'm not going to agree with everybody here. And not everybody's going to agree with me. There's going to be an occasional troll. There's going to be, you know, whatever. There's going to be all that kind of stuff. And just to try and walk through this as much as possible and, you know, take what you want and leave the rest. And not, you know, not say, oh, Blab doesn't give me this or it doesn't have that or when's it going to do this or when's it going to do that. But just to say here and what are the best things that I can take away from this today, right now and do that. And then that's it. End of it. And, and I'll agree with everything you said. And I will add, though, if you are not thinking about reach, you're making a mistake. It is about individual relationships. It's about the whole Dunbar number and all that kind of stuff. But reach is hugely important today. Sure. Now, let me ask you this. I, I'm just having a discussion. What is more important, having 200,000 Twitter followers that don't engage with you, that don't favorite your tweets, don't retweet them or anything like that, or having 20,000 super active fans, followers, whatever you want to call well, it. You, you can read my, you can read the blog I'm posting in two days because that's exactly what I say. I, I even out a couple of c companies almost. I don't mention them by name, but uh, it's, it's, it's really funny. I never agree with me. <laughs> okay. I never agree with me with J.S. Gilbert. It's funny. Um, okay. No, I t totally. You okay. can, you David. can have you can have fifty followers, and you can have incredible impact in your life and your business, and so on and so forth. It really depends upon what you're looking to do. Reach without engagement is nothing. But what they're basically saying is, what is the difference between a successful big business and a successful small business? And they used to think there were so many differences. And now they're saying the major difference is reach. Yeah. And I want to welcome David um, to I our little to panel here. Hello, David. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you. I have to uh, shoot over and do something. Thank you guys for having me on here. I'll no problem. Thanks for joining. Hey, it's good. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Awesome. If you could turn your mic up a little bit, that'd be awesome. I don't know if you got control over that. Is that good? Yeah, perfect. All hey, right. Steven, look, uh, Steven. Got an opinion on any of this? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know. It's, I, I think it's not an either or. It's want to say it's an and conversation. I think everyone keep talking about should you have maximum numbers, the reach, is the engagement level, right? At the end of the day, to me, it's uh, it's both. Yeah. I mean, when I when I push my marketing team or working with my clients. You know, it's always about that. At the end of the day, we want to make sure conversion happens. So that's the number one thing, developing avid and strong fans that's going to go out there and do word of mouth advertising for us to move the product, move the brain along. And the uh, I think the reach count is just simply it's one metric and you have to run your effectiveness against that number. And so, you know, at the end of the day, we talk about measure what matters uh, most and take action on that. 
you know, I, and I really have my comment about the CEO engagement. You know, I think it's kind of a, um, I'm not saying there's no CEO involved, getting involved with the branding and uh, social community. However, let's think about this. If I'm running a billion dollar company, do you think I have the time to be answering every single fan email tweet request that comes in? I mean, if that's the case, I don't think he's doing much of anything else. You know, when I'm running an eight-figure uh, company, uh, actually, I'm in the process of becoming completely email-less. So uh, by the end of the year, I won't even do any emails. So, <laughs> Wow. It, it yeah. depends, though, too. And, and I agree with you. I think it's hard to argue against the fact that, you know, the more numbers you have, you know, the, the more reach or, or whatever, the more, you know, kind of participation you have. I'm not saying that you can't have participation if you don't have the numbers. But, you know, the, if you look at it as a whole, the numbers are going to, you know, play in your favor. If you have 100,000 followers, it's more likely that you're going to reach more out of those followers with what you say, as long as you remain legitimate and don't kind of treat them as this, you know, sort of factory kind of machine that's just putting out tweets for the heck of it. And you stay kind of personable in there. Well, from a business standpoint, uh, where a lot of people I know and myself are today is our wells tend to be a lot narrower, but maybe a bit deeper. Uh, in 1997, I probably my income in a year might have been from, you know, 75 or 80 clients. The 2080 rule didn't apply as much as it does now. You know, 80 percent of your income coming from 20 percent of your clients. It was very well distributed. Now I have a scenario where maybe I have five or six clients. If I were to lose any one of those, it could be a significant impact in terms of, you know, the amount of money that I were going to make in a year. Um, it's more along those lines. So if you don't have the reach and you've got a, a, a smaller network that you're dealing with, you are you you can have the tendency to have more things impact you. But then again, if you go to a, a convention and there's 150 people at the convention, you'll generally find you've left making four or five meaningful um, connections. You go to a convention with 2,000 people and everybody's walking around trying to figure out uh, whose hand to shake and you, you wind up nothing but a pocket full of business cards that really don't really serve a whole purpose. So I, 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 I definitely am the, you want to, and it's not even engaging. You don't want to engage anymore. You have to fascinate. You have to really go beyond engagement. You have to create a scenario where you have the opportunity to be an advocate for others and they have an opportunity to be an advocate for you. And then expand the numbers of people that you service or can service you, you know, expand it out and, and get the reach. And yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. And one thing that we do uh, here at my new venture is the things that we teach is really teaching people need to have a, a kind of an ultimate super networker mindset. And so at the end of the day, you need to know tons of people and you have to have a good handful or, well, to say a percentage of them, right? People that you're willing to champion. And that means you're willing to pass their information along, advocate for them, help them bring in leads and connections and really be able to kind of scratch someone else's back first and be willing to commit to that and whether it's knowledge or deals and then continue to reach that. And I think a lot of people still just hop on social media thinking it's a, uh, a megaphone scenario. I'll just hop on and shout out whatever I want to say and then put on whatever, you know, headlines, uh, things that could be catchy. But the problem, there's no substance, there's no depth, right? And there's no sincerity. Yeah. And those are the, I think that's the issue. Marketers are killing each other. Marketers are killing marketers with a lot of these BS stuff. And at the end of the day, I mean, I don't go to social uh, media conferences anymore. I haven't gotten in years just because it's disgusting when I go. It's just a bunch of marketers high-fiving each other, selling each other the same bullshit. <laughs> and I don't see any of them executing. None of them have run any decent-sized companies ever. But yet they want to tell me how they're brand advocates or brand experts and uh, supermarketers and at the end of the day they're selling their you know 199 program yeah and so yeah. you know so the end of the right now the key is continue to drive the real conversation i'm in the process always looking for uh true talent and true experts because those those are the people that i want to connect with that i want to have meaningful conversation with and those are the ones i want to pass on deals to 
that is not a fit for us or that we need a partner to come in and do great work for our clients. Because, you know, when you go online and start searching for SEO experts, marketers, and whatever the case might be, there's billion of them out there. And so how do we, uh, how do we cultivate and or uh, develop that strong uh, professional network and that we can actually help each other and also our clients uh, really obtain their goals. Yeah, it kind of becomes counterproductive because I've heard from multiple people here talking to myself as a photographer, like, you know, before live streaming and, and I wasn't really a big Twitter user and all that stuff. And, you know, I was more on Facebook and I really didn't see the power of social media for me. But, you know, after coming on, it, it has helped me more. You know, I've had people visit California now and then book me to shoot. So it has, in a way, you know, helped me in that sense. But um, for someone who's not in a marketing, for someone who doesn't, you know, run a, a big company or so, it's very easy to get scared off by just seeing all these marketers talking to each other. And I've heard this from a lot of people joining Blab, you know, they're then in another Blab going, God, is all this is, is SEO and, and, and social media talk? It's like, no, you know, it, it, it's at that early stage where those are the people that hear about it. And so those are the people exactly. that are using it. But, you know, in the end, it's going to evolve into other things. But in order to do that, we have to, you know, provide content that's interesting for the general public, not just for the sort of, you know, industry experts and, and all that. I think. And what are people going to talk about? They're not going to talk about I went to Blab and I experienced four people sitting in a room talking about school. They're not going to talk about, oh, I met a guy who's in a nursing home because he was uh, he, he was really seriously messed up. And this is the way that he reaches out. No, they're going to talk about I heard somebody discussing WordPress or I heard somebody talking about this. And often, because there are no qualifications to many of the people that are speaking here, you'll you'll hear about it in a negative sense. I heard somebody talking about SEO. They had no idea what they were talking about. Or I heard somebody talking about this. I don't know why, who, why anybody would listen to them, that kind of stuff. So this is what's going on, not within Blab, but what's being reported to people outside of Blab. No. Just as many people are probably making a case for what the heck is Blab and why do you need to be there as there are Blabaholics, people like me who are here way too much. So, yeah, both schools, I, again, it's so... From from where I sit on the perch, which is in 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 a lot of advertising circumstances, the the people out there that are looking at this stuff, they do still look at numbers. And you know, yes, you can't you can't compare Blab to YouTube. You can't compare compare Periscope to YouTube, and you can't compare Meerkat to YouTube. They're they're different individuals, and I'm sorry that you know YouTube is a giant, and that's that's where it is. But do all of those indi individual platforms have benefits for the people who consume or distribute information on them? Yes, they definitely do. And does every, you know, does every, what do they say, mighty oak start off as a little acorn? Yes, it does. So, you know, who knows? But uh, this is the first platform where the content, if you do put it on YouTube and repurpose it versus, let's say, a Meerkat stream or a Periscope stream, this is something where people can watch it again and get something out of it. I, I mean, yes, maybe some streams on Meerkat and Periscope, but I've never, ever really seen too many that I would say, oh, great, this is something I want to watch again, or there's a part in there I really want to listen to again. Like, you know, this maybe, you know, three hours ago, we were listening to something you know, I might go back and go, oh, let's see what that point there was made. And so I feel like this is actually content that's worth repurposing onto YouTube. But, uh, you know, that's that's what makes it exciting for me. But yeah, every, you get, you guys watch every, a lot platform, of every platform, it just it's just another tool. And uh, I think people just need to remember that and, you know, don't become a technology fanboy because it doesn't do any good. At the end of the yeah. day, right, you have a particular agenda and purpose or or business and you just have to use whatever makes sense for you uh, to accomplish your your goals. So, but, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy Blab. Hopped on from the very beginning just about. And, uh, you know, I think they've done probably the best, a great job of engaging their their customers, their users. Where are you located, yeah. David? Right now, I am in Minneapolis. I bounce between here and uh, Phoenix and then uh, L.A., but I um, mean, Minneapolis today. Hey, Andy, how are you? 
a lot of people joining us. Wow. Yeah. This is yeah. Cool. yeah. All these people here. Uh, Bob Koops would like to sit down. All right. And I think this is like what we what's happening right now. It's one of the to me one of the huge uh, benefit and ex, you know the really an exciting part about uh, Blab, right? It's super easy to use, intuitive. Yes. It came out right away. It's you know works uh, really well on a mobile phone, and uh, you can get people in and out. Now you can engage with all kinds of people around the world with a couple clicks, and. Uh, and I think the other part is also helpful is that for those uh, that don't have huge Twitter uh, followings, right? They still can engage in meaningful conversation. Yeah, you just walk in here literally almost any time of day or night and find somebody to talk to, to about something, and you'll find it interesting. It's uh, it, it's 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 so wonderful. I mean, I do see a lot of applications for a blab in the future that don't necessarily deal with monetization or straight out business tactics. I do see this as a, a place where individuals who can't get to, say, a quilting bee or a knitting meeting or one of those kinds of things can participate from a distance with with those people by being in, in a video or, or just in the chat. Um, I see it as a great place for people who... Uh, have fears, uh, maybe even a fear of leaving their home, uh, being able to go in here and, and use this as a stepping stone. A great place for people who have depression of all kinds of of, um, of levels. Um, just all, you know, lots and lots of great ways of using the space that aren't directly business. But I do also think that while these little things are going to be going on, you're going to see people like Robert Stern eventually talking to 10,000 people here and, you know, um, <laughs> the only thing we're going to need at that point that will help us through is some sort of channel guide or, or, you know, something, something that'll help us, you know, know, know what's going on, be able to, you know, like a DVR kind of tool, you know, a, a menu and a DVR type of thing for here. Yeah. I remember someone blind that I was, that I saw on here and they said, this is the first time they've really felt comfortable and had an audience to kind of broadcast to someone playing piano and singing. And so I, I thought that was really cool. So what do you, what do you disagree with me on Robert? Everything, anything you say, <laughs> I just say the opposite. I just want to stir, you know, the pot a little bit. It's okay. And you say you're on here too much. I'm like, what the hell does that make me? <laughs> Yeah, now I, I really feel yeah, bad about my I, presence. Well, when I was at Blab's offices yesterday, they said that five of the people at Blab were staying there. And I said, you do have a room for Robert, right? <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> they were laughing. I know half the time they blab in the morning. I saw Sean on the other day. He had just woken up. His hair was all over the place. And you'd look it over at like Victor or someone like, oh, where did you sleep? He's like, oh, I don't know. I couldn't find a place. There's too many people passed out. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start a channel on here for uh, recovering blab users. There's blab actually there's a group already, blab David. Anonymous. Yeah. David, there's already a Facebook group called Blab. Re, um, Sandra made it, and it's Rehab. Uh, Blab Re uh, something or whatever. It was hysterical. We have the website too, Blab dot Rehab. Blab dot Rehab. That's what it is. You know, but it's okay if you miss a meeting. They always blab the events. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, Robert? Are you getting many replays? Do you mind uh, telling us? Or uh, you know, I haven't checked in a while because I, uh, I, I not really going in and checking the replays. So I mean, while we're on, I had a really good one last night. Um, your ETA? Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, the ETA one. Um, so I want to see. I'll, I'll, let me pull it up as we're on here, and I'll see what kind of replays it had. Thank you to all the people who have been telling a little bird. Wow, we've got uh, quite a few people in here, which is great. Uh, get all that yeah, in. I had to turn my phone down. You heard it. It kept going. <laughs> <laughs> right, replays. Uh, where are the ET? What are the ETAs? I, just I didn't know see. you had the numbers that, on that there. One had, um, that one's only had two replays so far. But, but it's just last night. Yeah. And then the other thing too, would you would you do anything to try and coax people to watch a replay? Because you, you, people do rep, uh, promote when they have upcoming blabs. I haven't really seen anybody promoting 
this was a blab that took place last week and it was great. You should really go in and watch the replay. They should be. Okay. That's part of my, my, my live streaming classes that I'm doing now. Um, like I just did off 22 social for a lot of people that aren't even on Periscope or Meerkat. And I was explaining with all these things that you save the, the Periscopes, the Meerkats and the blab replays, you know, it's just like a blog. Right. If you had a blog that was great two years ago, a great article, and it's still relevant today, wouldn't you tweet it out once in a while? I never so? date my blogs. I never date them. So. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure your wife is too. But. No, no. <laughs> you know, you, you take the date off. I'm of kidding with you. <laughs> Dude, just like fashion, right? Healthy. Evergreen content eventually comes by back. So some so. of them are a little, you know, the, the ones that are talking about, you know, my being in the Civil War, those are, you know, a little dated, but uh, a lot <laughs> but yeah, of them I play mean, pretty well. I mean, t take a replay and tweet it out two weeks yeah. later if in case you've missed, you know. That's true. I mean, I do that. that for my little artist show. I just line them all up on the website and tweet that out. And hopefully, you know, someone might see a recent one and go, oh, let's see what else there's been in the past. But, you know, and then they're on YouTube, too, which is the great thing about repurposing these. Yeah, and I think I think sometimes people get too uh, hung up on the fact they think everything on social media online has to be Sorry fresh and brand new. Right. In order to be good. But that's really not true. I mean, just like. Just if you create evergreen content, you can you can repost. You can you know because at the end of the day, it's going to be new people that hop on. The new people is going to discover, and that's how yeah. a lot of the YouTube still works. And so if you don't promote it, you just think it's done and over with. Well, I think you're going to missing out. Alex Khan is here. I, mean, it is a very I already evolving. see John and I are going to have to do a blab together from Human Two because he doesn't consider this live streaming. No. I have a, I I have a, a new a video list chat. on, on uh, Twitter for Alex Khan and other people. It's called People Who Are So Good Looking It Hurts My Eyes. <laughs> hey, we're all German romance on Alex Khan? <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. We're coming, Alex. We get it, yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm going to hop out. So I'm going to open up the C4 for uh, the bromance with Alex here. And uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> I got I to go get no, uh, I just leave go it thanks, go to my son dinner. My, my wife <laughs> actually saw him on here and she goes, yeah, well, see if I can, if you can hook me up with him too. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. I was very I happy did. to find out he was a German. He'd be proud of my nation. So, so okay. So John over at human two says, this is not live streaming. What's your opinion? I think it's video chat. That's being streamed live. So you're putting the words live streaming into the definition of what it is. I would say it's a part of it because of the fact that, you know, just currently with the trend of Periscope and Meerkat, it's kind of been grouped into there. If this would have come out before that, would it have been called live streaming? I don't think so. Would you consider Google Plus live streaming? Google Plus or Google Hangouts? Sorry, I meant Google Hangouts. Yeah. Yes. And you did? Would you did you have that opinion? Did you have that word attached to it before Meerkat and Periscope? Yes, I did. I can't. I can only speak for yeah, myself. Yeah, I'm wondering how about the audience too. I don't know. It'd be good to have kind of like a vote count. Like, did you do you think of uh, Google Hangouts one? Yes, it was live streaming. Or two? No, it's not. JS, he just did an ETA. <laughs> <laughs> You notice I guessed it on my like 12th when I actually seriously thought about what it was. I got it right. Um, it, was, is, it was a good it was a good blab. It was a good blab. Um, here's a here's a thought that I have. You were asking about and then I'll let uh, Alex and you guys talk for a little bit. But you did ask this. And, and this is a different thought. When they uh, did um, uh, IQ tests years ago and they found out they were racially biased, it was very interesting because one of the questions they asked was, what do you use in the rain? And they had a picture of a newspaper and a picture of an umbrella or whatever. And in rural southern areas, they picked the newspaper because that's what people would use in the rain to protect themselves from rain coming in. Hmm. So I think when we look at something like a blab, uh, people are looking at this and they're looking at it differently. So Robert, for you, this is probably streaming media. For me, this is a conversational platform. Mm -hmm. But... Then when I go in and I watch people like you, I say to myself, this is streaming media. So it's a breath mint and a floor wax, whatever. Um, yeah, I, 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 think it's, I think it's unfair to, to put a, a, um, a categorization on it that, that is, um, 
inhibiting. So at, at sometimes, at sometimes that's a tool for me to reach out to people. At times it's a tool for people to reach out to me. Um, and, and that's, I think, probably what makes it so um, the unpredictability of it in, in some ways. And then the familiarity of faces. You know, I like being able to see people, certain people every day or every so often or whatever. So there's a lot of different things that are going on. I wouldn't deny it's social media. I wouldn't deny it's streaming media. I wouldn't deny it's a conversational platform. I wouldn't deny any of that stuff. And it's a question as to whether or not um, there will be a major body of users that really define what it is when it, when it scales up. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess... Because a lot of people brought up the word video, and to me, because like we said, it's it's interpretation, and that's in the of the beholder's eyes and everything else. So, to me, when I hear the word video, I don't think of it as live. Hmm. I think of YouTube. I think of yeah. watching a DVD where I can pause it, I can rewind, I can edit it, I can do all those things. I look at this as live streaming because, first of all. We are live right now. We have four different streams of cameras built into one platform so that we can all see each other. I mean, that's like saying then Periscope's not a live streaming app. Yeah. yeah. Because it's the same thing. It turns into a video afterwards. So live yeah. streaming consumption, live streaming information sending, live streaming whatever. Kind of a group want. live streaming. So video is then maybe when we talk about music and we say, does it sound any different if it's on a record or a cassette or a CD or a DVD or whatever? I mean, aside from the, yeah. the electronics, but it, music is music. He's Absolutely. still pushing it. It's Alex. not streaming. It's web conferencing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just do the whole thing in German. That way, uh, you know, oh, no, it seems no, like no, got no, about no. six or Alex, seven are you following here. me? <laughs> Are you able to turn your mic up a little bit or maybe get a little closer to Move the to mic it? over because you're using the good mic now. Yeah, I'm having the good mic now. Is it uh, better now? A little bit. Maybe you get it closer I'm to your mouth. To the mic. Is the there. mic actually working? It should be about six it? inches yeah. away. I feel like it's picking up your webcam mic or something, not the real one. Is yeah. it? Is it working? That's better. Is, is this working? Yes. Or is this it's got to be Alex. It's got to be six inches away from your mouth. No, no further, because then it starts to get faded. If it understands and it's plugged in, is is this working or is this working? Okay, that yeah, one. it's on. Second one. Second it's one. On? Second one. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I'm new to that whole mic thing, so but I will put it more close now that I know it's working. That's better. Okay, great. So, here so we what's go. your opinion? Is this live streaming or? Live streaming yes, video, or what? What is this to you? What do you? What do you? What would you say? Blab is. Well, definitely, it's it's live streaming video. What what else should be? Uh, I mean, a public a video conference, huh? A public video conference. Okay, I mean, yeah, that would actually describe it, I guess, better in a way. But for me, it's live streaming. You know, everything which is which is pretty new, which works on a mobile device, and it's live. For me, it's live streaming. I don't, I don't like to make it too complicated for people yeah. because people are already like confused. So many things are happening, and uh, everything is like like live streaming. And the question why why it's working out so well, it's because it comes to a mobile device. It's basically because live streaming is not new. Many people don't realize it because they they heard about it the first time. It's it's been here in the '90s, right, Robert? Yep. I guess yeah. in the end, the term doesn't matter. It 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 does the job that it's supposed to do, you know what I mean? And that the reason it's so popular is because it's, like you said, simple. Simplicity is the reason that this is winning out. If this took eight steps to start a blab or, or 10 or 20, it'd be a lot less people on here. But, you know, the ease of use and being able to just instantly access it, bam, that's why you have so many people, you know, in addition to, of course, having a freaking supercomputer in your pocket. But, um, you know, we this discussion, you know, has been on here a millionth time, but... Uh, you know, that's, I think what it comes down to is just ease of use. Definitely, definitely. And it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the growth is just, it's freaking me out. I mean, I, I love that, that part of on keynote at the Periscope summit, which showed like, um, how long technology need 
to grow up to 1 million members. And it started like with Twitter, which needed like two years to grow to 1 million. Then we have like Facebook, which needed like 10 months. Then Instagram, which needed like two and a half months. And Periscope did it in a week. Wow. So that's amazing. I mean, this, this whole thing is like growing like crazy. I would love to hear like the numbers of Blob, like how many members we have on Blob right now. They haven't released it yet. They haven't released now because they're not focusing on it. They I can give you a best guess best estimate product. if you want to know. What's huh? your guess? What's your estimate? 75,000 people that have used it and about thirty-two to 3,500 people that are using it at least on a semi-regular basis. Double. Yeah, that's pretty small. That's a pretty... Uh... I think there's been uh, approximately 150,000 people have been through it. And I would say maybe on a regular basis, it's about 2,000 people. 2,000? Yep. I'd agree with your total number on the people who have visited it or used it at one point or another. But actively using, you know, I think probably 1,000 or less that are really heavily actively using it. Oh, we're not it. saying heavily active. I mean, there are people who come in here once a week to watch Joel come or to watch, uh, you know, Brian Fonzo or somebody like that. And I'm counting them. So okay. I'm saying 32, 3,500 people. How much would you guys estimate the people that actually go on camera and or host a show out of that? 450, 500. Nah, I'd go higher. Higher? Well, yeah, I mean, either way, it's pretty small. Percentage wise. I mean, I'm not talking about people who have just done it once. I'm talking about people who have done it. Oh, oh, go on camera. I thought you said start a show. You're hosting a show, but you got people coming in and out that are popping on. No, 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 I, meant, I thought he said hosting a show. I'm guessing 450 that host a show. No, no, I meant hosting and are, are on camera actively, you know, kind of here and there. How about you, Alex? How about you? I know you Periscope a lot. Like, what's your reason behind not having um, been more consistently hosting a show um, and kind of establishing yourself more on Blab? Well, it, it, it's simply opportunity costs. It's you need to you need to think what you do with your time. I would love to host shows on Blob, and I, I really like Blob, and that's why I, I love to jump on. But it takes more time to host the Blob because you pre-promote it. If you want to do it right, right, you need to think about a topic, and you need maybe to invite people to it. So it needs a lot of preparation, and it's much easier to like right now, you know, come into a Blob. Someone set it up. Already people are in there, and you just jump on. You know, it's it's simply. Yeah. It's simply easier, but if you want to really get the word out and you want to, of course, um, control your show, then it's cool. I mean, for me, it's just a matter of time, I guess, till I will we'll be more on Plop. It's about like if they grow and I see that more and more people are actually using it, then it would be interesting. For me, I'm doing very well on Periscope and I just finished my, my first Periscope where I hit like more than 5,000 people on a live show. Oh. which is which is which was my maximum so far and uh if i compare it it's of course a, a totally different number when i would do the same thing on blob <laughs> but what i what i love to do is this kind of way to put it on periscope in, in some way so what i just did is like the people could call me on skype they could call me on my number well i, I added a new number of course for mm -hmm. doing this and it's a kind of blob and what i love about that whole thing between blob and periscope many people go online or go live for the first time on blob and try it out afterwards on periscope because it's easier here with that crew with that you know people beside you and i look up to you and and so on you know it's easier yeah that's interesting i haven't met too many i mean i'm sure there are like you're saying but i haven't i haven't really talked to or that'd be interesting to get the opinion of people who use this first and then went to periscope because i've really heard you know so many people coming the other direction but um what, what did you hear from them as far as their opinion going from blab to one of those platforms it's it's different i mean i think honestly everything which keeps me stronger connected with my community and which makes me have giving me like more opportunities to talk to them is that better feature and blob definitely when it comes down to features is better for that you know if if blob would have it's an interesting it's an interesting question someone i, I did a blob yesterday i jumped on one and someone asked me like if blob would have been bigger than periscope so the other way around or started before periscope 
would I jump on Periscope then? Like I do now jump on Blab. And that's not easy to, to answer because I really love Blob. I really love this technology and I would love, and I talked to Periscope two weeks ago about this kind of thing and they just have a different approach about it. But I would love if that we had that kind of split screen. I mean, I do split screen on Periscope. People love it. Alex, Robert, for, you, for both of you guys, here's a question. Uh, why do you think uh, Periscope got to a million people in a week and Blab hasn't? You want well, to stop? My, my opinion, it was the media. I mean, you got somebody like Ellen DeGeneres in the first week, just all of a sudden started talking about it on her show. Okay. I mean, that alone was like a huge amount of people. And you, you had some big name people that just came out there real fast. Okay. Yeah. So what I believe is it, it's a couple of reasons. First of all, one big reason will be for sure that Twitter bought them. And that press release that Twitter bought them for 100 million. And it was like a very hot topic with Mercat just started a month before. So this gave them a lot of traction. Did Twitter this buy them before they actually launched? Yeah, they yes. bought them in January. Oh. Almost I think it was just under $100 million. Yeah, I know. I, I think they had launched already. Oh, okay. And that, was, I, that was why I followed it because I'm sitting there going, who spends $100 million on an app that wasn't even launched yet? There's got to be – and I didn't even know about Meerkat. I just sure. knew about Periscope, and I was looking forward to it. And then Meerkat came out, and I said, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. And then I think it was two and a half weeks later, Periscope came out, and it was like, whoa. You know, th this sure, is so going to be an amazing year of, of this. And then Blab came, and then I know Alex and I both tried my eye. And then we tried, uh, I tried Fire Talk, and there, there's more coming out still. There's another one coming out next month. And I think what helps too is the competition. You know, you have, you had this whole Meerkat versus Periscope right away. You know, you had these two kind of entities going against each other versus, you know, yeah, Blab is kind of competitive with, with Google Hangouts, but Google Hangouts is kind of old news. So there's not as much sort of, you know, media or press or anything like that around it. This being like new and hot, it's still beta. Um, you know, I think it's there and they're taking a different approach, kind of slowly working their way yeah. in. Where I feel like Periscope right away was like, we got to get in there. We got to hit it hard. We got to knock out Meerkat. And uh, sort of that, you know, kind of drove them to to get a lot of users. So did Periscope then, have a lot of issues when it first launched? Did it have problems? Was it crashing or there issues or stability or anything like that? I didn't have too many issues. I mean, a, a month into it when the real push started coming in, I thought there were more issues, but I mean, Alex, because when did you come on Alex? I was on day one. Me wow. too. Me too. Wow. I, started on day one. I didn't see as many issues in the beginning. Okay. No, not, not really. They had a little bit problems with uh, content. Mm -hmm. So I saw a lot of nude content in the first days. You don't see it anymore. So the reporting feature didn't work too well or they couldn't handle it because it was too much happening. Um, besides that, they, they, they still have problems some, sometimes. I mean, sometimes just the stream is not is freezing all the time for the people. They cannot handle that those peak times when really mm. big people go online at the same time. They can't handle it still. So they have a lot of trouble that. during Periscope Summit. <laughs> well, the quality of the of the video, if you you know that HD video, that's a lot of uh, bandwidth you know being used up. Because I had a lot of trouble with it too. I I did a Periscope. I was never a big Periscope user. I did use Meerkat for a little while. Um, it just didn't lend itself to what I wanted to do. But um, I noticed that someone in the in the chat was saying, hey, this kind of feels like a video game because I'd attached the camera to this uh, motorcycle we were cruising around. And I thought he was like, oh, this is a video game. This looks cool. But then I got the screenshot after and the pixels were basically this big, you know, to where you couldn't even see what the heck was going on. But, uh, you know, to me, the, the video quality was always bad. Like, have you guys ever experienced that? Or is that an AT&T problem? Well, you get the I video think quality that you see experience it sometimes that that kind of problems. But I, I wanted to, to add something else about like Blab and why Blab doesn't doesn't grow as fast as Periscope. I mean, as I understand the mission, and I think Forkan is, is the CTO is still here. They are they are trying to build up the best possible product first. Mm, yeah. They are really concentrating on the product. They're working very closely 
with the community together. And I see like that they, they jump on even Sean and, and Furkan, like the CEO, the CTO, they jump on different blobs mm -hmm. to, to keep up with it. And they try to, to build in this way that as soon as they feel it's ready, I think then is that moment when they start to rise around or maybe they even get bought by Google or you don't know. And <laughs> then they scale it up. So I think scaling is not their main issue right now. No. I would agree with you very much on that, Alex. The real, the real big question is going to become when, when Facebook actually allows it to go to everybody. That, that's going to be the test. For Meerkat? For Meerkat and Periscope. Yeah. If, if and when it gets to that point. I mean, nobody knows if it, when it's going to happen and if it's going to happen. They may just keep it on verified people only. We don't know. Well, I think that Ben Rubens made it pretty clear a few times, you know, similar to the the people who run Blab, is that, uh, you know, they don't he he has his vision with it, and he wants it, you know, to be this community thing. He doesn't want it to, you know, get taken over by Facebook or some sort of a huge corporate entity, and then be turned into whatever they want it to become. So, you know, it will be interesting to see. I just don't know when. You know, and for Khan just made a great statement. It's it, it's a long game. The race isn't to a million users. It's to 500 million users. Yeah, that's true. And that's true because, you know, to no. say we have 15, 16 million users on Periscope, I don't even know what the numbers are for Meerkat. And for Khan won't release the numbers on Blab. Um, because they don't mean anything at this point. I know. But it's always good to uh, have an idea of how many people are actually working on it. Well, it's not that it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's important for brands. It's important for some of the broadcasters. It's because of opportunity cost, what I said. But I can understand that from their point of view, the first, and actually it makes sense. It, it's about the best possible product. You need to, when you go out, you need to be ready. And that's what all of them <laughs> don't do right now. All the big players, they just get it out because it's time sensitive and they're working in it. And they take a different approach. It works out and I love it. I mean, I just, yesterday I saw the first time this on a desktop device. First of all, I'm happy about desktop is working for me finally. So thanks to you, Furkan. It's, it's, it's awesome because as you know, Robert, I had serious problems to get into a blob on my desktop. Oh, come on. That, that night I interviewed you on that Saturday and all the, it <laughs> took us like 15 tries to get in. Mike yeah, Baltus, exactly. Mike Baltus has a really good question here. Uh, What's your why in wanting to see the, the platform grow? How and what type of content would each of you want on this platform? My, that's Mike. He's always stirring the freaking pot. You know, damn Denver guys. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I mean, I use it for business. I mean, you, you will, everybody who follows me knows what I do. I use it for, for business. I have some fun with it also. Um, I, I love seeing it grow just on a business sense. I like seeing it grow on a personal sense just to get, you know, to get to meet, you know, JS and, and, and Alex I've known since Periscope. So, but, you know, people way back into the day, want to meet, yeah, way back when, you know, <laughs> Alex and I have known each other six months. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> think about that. We've known each other six months, but when we saw each other in Periscope, it was like we were old friends. Yeah, I've yeah. had that too. It's That's multiple amazing. people now when well, you meet them in real well, life. How long I know the bland people? And I was in the office yesterday and I felt like, you know, I worked there. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I can't believe they let you in. You know, I think there's the positive and the negative of growing because when there was only 100 people on here, it was such a tight little tiny community. Like I knew people's schedule and they went to work and all that. You know, this was over a couple of weeks. You really get to know people quickly, first of all. But, you know, once it grows, yes, you get more opportunity for the business side, but you do start to kind of lose that personal side a little bit because it's less likely that you're going to run into those same people all the time. It's less likely you're even going to be able to get in the chat if you have, you know, 60, 70 people or then going upwards to a thousand people. Imagine a thousand people. You have four seats and somebody wants to ask a question, you know, in person or, or on video. It's going to be impossible. You're going to be waiting in a line of a hundred people. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think you start losing that personal personal touch so in a way i don't want it to grow but on the other side yes you know fresh content well, and everything would be great the and the side is if it, it needs doesn't to grow to survive if it doesn't grow it'll be gone 
That's what I'm saying. It needs to grow to survive. But, you know, you want to yeah. keep your little small town atmosphere, but you still want to have, you know, the uh, the shop, uh, you know, or whatever. Not, I'm not going to say Walmart because I freaking don't want them anywhere. But, you know, you still <laughs> want to have a, a nice supermarket around the corner to go buy food at. But, you know, at the same time, you want to keep it personal. So yeah. it's hard, you know, and coming, especially coming from Germany to here. Like, you know, I don't, Alex, I don't know if you still live in Germany or if you live in the States, but something I really miss is going to the little bakery on the corner and getting my bread there and then going over to you know to, to, Laden, what's that Tante Emma Laden. yeah exactly Tante Emma Laden was alles, where you just have everything you know so it, 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 I miss that you know here you got to go in this giant supermarket and you know you're getting checked out by a machine so I don't know it's, just but a you know, it's a good it's a very good point and um, what I think why actually live streaming works at all like this and is seeing such a tremendous growth right now is because we are actually coming from that of personal interaction, like seeing each other, talking to each other live. And we lost that with Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and WhatsApp. It's, it's all not live. And now we're coming back to where we're actually coming from. And that's at least something which is more positive. Although maybe there will be in the future 1,000 people or 2,000 people like I experienced already on Periscope. And it is different. Of course, it is different if you have thousands of people in your stream versus <laughs> to talk to someone like we did like in the, in the early days, you know, just meet up four or five people and spend the whole evening together. You know, it's just not happening too much. But I'm happy about that technology itself because it embraces somehow where we're coming from. I have, I have a kind of interesting question too for everybody. Um, you know, I always hear people say like, Okay, I'm going to go hang out with my friends now in real life. What's kind of your opinion on that? Like, you know, we're, I know this is obviously real life, but how do you guys feel about that, that sort of statement or that well, way to, of analyzing Well, to me, it's this? just a way of discerning whether or not you're doing something in a physical realm versus in a digital realm. That's... But do you feel ashamed that you're not as social in real in real life, but you're being social? You might spend four hours here where I used to spend four hours at a buddy's house hanging out, but well, I just find the a, conversation here more interesting. If, if you're talking about real life, you know, how do we refer to people in Facebook as friends? I mean, yeah, you know, these are not people who are going to help me move or pick me up at the airport when I come in at two o'clock in the morning. I can call and send your car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's difficult to say. I like, send you you are my friend. You are my friend. <laughs> I'll make it an Uber. <laughs> so, I mean, I've had people here help me out in in, in actual phys in actual pre being present physically. You know what I mean? That I've that I've met on these platforms. So I, I wouldn't say that you know it's not possible. Like you're only in San Francisco. If I came up to San Francisco, I might call some people and, and you would say, "Hey, let's all go grab a beer or something." You know, or you know, Colin and uh, John, who was in here earlier. I know Colin just went out to San Diego and stayed. I think he's still out there pretty much stayed at uh, John's house for free the whole time. So, you this, know, it does. He milked make, this is one of the things that bothers me when people say disagree. I'm not exactly sure what you're disagreeing with me. The fact that Facebook friends are different than people you have that are friends in a non-digital world. No, I think he stated that he, the in real life comment, um, he made friends on Periscope that he was able to transform. My over three into closest real friends life. now are people that I met originally online. Three yeah. people friends you know listen you, you can't take away the idea that in real life you know when alex and i saw each other and gave that handshake and hugged each other and stuff like that you can't take away that that is not better than sitting next to him in a blab i mean it, it, he's across the country from me I'm, I'm on the east he's on the west coast right now in real life you know and that's one of my things i promote in business all the time you know start engaging build relationships and then the magic thing is take it offline yeah. Because if you yeah. just live our lives in the computers, you know, with our little friends in our tiny computers that are talking to each other, you're missing out on so much more. So the fact that he's in, you know, when he's the next time in the New York area, you know, I'm going to meet him up and, and do dinner or lunch or something like that, because I, I don't want it to just be digital or or I love somebody used a term in here. Um, they called them um, a little tech, little text place said it e friends. Yeah, because we are friends. But we and, started out online, but now you want that personal touch. Yeah. 
I forgot who said it, but it, it sounded kind of weird when you first said it. But they they were talking about meeting someone in real life, and then you smell them for the first time, and you you know you touch them, but you only get to use you know a couple of senses here versus and when just you meet so you know, Alex life. smells really oh. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that beard, it's I had to, you Alex. Alex. I had to. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, no, and that's actually that's actually one more one more thing which which points in in this direction. I mean, we are going back to where we're coming from. What I said before. And this is also one reason why actually I'm meeting up with people all the time, which I got to know from Periscope or Blub. I mean, I never met someone from Facebook or from Instagram. So with with this live streaming, it's really happening because people understand it's real, it's authentic, it's it's really mm-hmm. it's really happening, and you are looking forward to it. And it's amazing, like what what Robert said, like at the Periscope Summit, for example, all the people. First of all, all the people were really like they acted on on their streams. And next to it, they all were so nice to each other. They did things after the Periscope Summit together. You you say hello like with a hug. So it's 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 just tremendous how this technology brings us actually together. And this will be in the next step really interesting when brands understand that value. Because it's all about those three things. You need they need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. It's the KLT rule, right? Mm-hmm. That's what all is about. Yeah, that's how you sell your product. Hmm. And those broadcasting streams, and by the way, I always need to laugh when I see this because we have a magician in our apartment and he's always putting cards. Like you see there, there's a card oh. <laughs> somehow and I always I saw it also in the periscope stream. I don't know. I don't get it away anymore. It's, it's even too high for myself. I jumped like it, and I couldn't grab it. <laughs> yeah, aren't you like twelve feet tall? Six <laughs> foot five. You think about a card, you sign it, and then he just puts like his put it up, and it's it's the one who stays on the ceiling. I did this a couple of times, so there you see another one. Over that's it. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's weird, but that's that's awesome about about those streaming, and that's why I think like. <laughs> <many> people... <laughs> he says he thought it was a German AC outlet. <laughs> is it a 120 in <laughs> yeah so that that's awesome in my eyes that was atw networking brought up an interesting thing why do we consider the phone to be real life well i'm a big believer in the phone i mean i pick up the phone and call people all the time i do too they just don't answer anymore mm-hmm. well i didn't mean to do that to you, but <laughs> i mean <laughs> Yesterday, I, I talked about actually smartphones on a on a blog and said like, well, there are seven ways to reach me from WhatsApp over Facebook and a Periscope and so many different ways. And then someone asked like, what about calling? I, I forgot to name <laughs> calling because it's not in my mindset that you actually it's, can call with that smartphone. It's an app now. It's called the phone <laughs> app. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's like the least wow. used part of the phone these days. But I agree. Like I, I hate the phone now for some reason. Like you know, I like seeing people. And then second of all, I'd rather just write a text message. If, so, if unless it's a, you know, phone call internationally to my family or something like that, I just rarely use it now because either I'm going to see the person in real life because they're quickly accessible, they're close by, or I'll hop on one of these things and or appear in and have a, have a private conversation. So I just see less and less use for just having. A just voice conversation, like you know, for Khan was saying, the more senses, the better. Sure. Why I mean, I, I've gotten to the engage in person. That's yeah. Uh... We got a question. Why would you not want to engage in person? <laughs> oh, it's, he's exactly right. You know, if you can engage in person, that's the whole thing. I mean, my business now has gone international because I'm dealing with people all over the world for social media. So. I can't necessarily go meet somebody who's in Sydney for a cup of coffee, but I can take it to a step and I can Skype with them. I can FaceTime with them. So at least I'm adding other senses. It's not just typing little emails or text back and forth. Um, and, th- and that at least brings it a little bit closer till I can get to that point possibly at some time to physically meet them in person. I'm all for it. pick up the phone. I did a whole blog on that back in April. Hashtag pick up the phone because it's important, you know, Get those connections that that are one on one with people. I guess for Alex, he he must get pawed and manhandled a lot in in. Uh, in well, we had a seventeen um, seventeen guys for security at Periscope Summit for him to uh, 
to line up the people that wanted to hug him and see him. And look at that. <laughs> well, I actually was one of the only, uh, well, some did it too, but one of the few who didn't went through the line, but stand like behind the line and waited to come in with the, with the other ones because, you know, I, I really like to engage. I mean, what do you do? When you when you come to a periscope summit also when you step on the line you know you again meet with those people i mean it's all about i what think is can you explain what the line is what can you explain what the line is i, I was the line when you went to the periscope party you know there was like a long long line you took like to wait i waited i think like half an hour to come in and Without saying names, some of the other speakers, they just went, you know, I'm a speaker, you know, I'm going like... In, mm. I did not I do that. <laughs> no, you did I know, you didn't. I stood in line. <laughs> I also stood in line. But the people were like confused, you know. It, it's, it's, it's actually funny because it's such a young technology and it's such early days. But in, in your own environment, you know, like for me, it's, it's mostly Periscope people look up to you because many people are watching you. That's the same effect like when you're in, in the pedestrian precinct, you know, and you see like someone playing the guitar and like 100 people standing above him. You, you stand there and think it's, it's something special, right? Who yeah. was playing the guitar? Huh? Who was playing the guitar? Well, I can. Uh, you were on the rooftop. <laughs> Not on a pedestrian precinct, but yeah. Um, so it's, it's fascinating how it's changing in such an, in such an, fast pacing time it's it's amazing i mean i get tons of emails every day from people i asking and and, and doing this and, and 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 saying thank you for all you do and so on and all i do in my eyes is just contributing to a community i want to build up you know and uh, everyone should do this too it's it's a normal it's a normal thing no way to 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 thank you for because others are doing it too and i Myself, I have a lot of respect for those people who go online, go live, be passionate, and like two people are watching. Because I don't know if I would do this. Honestly, I don't know if I would put all my passion, all my time on something and explain it again and again when only two people would watch. I have the highest respect for those kind of people who they're, because they are really passionate. They really care about those one or two people who are watching and that's great in my eyes. and I, I think if brands could realize that that guy can probably sell those two people something like the size of a house by the time you know because he's building that much of a trust with them and, and engaging with them and those people know that even though they're just you know two little people that he's being just as passionate as the person speaking to a thousand so i think there's a lot of value in that i was i was talking to brian kramer a few weeks ago uh, if you guys know who he is he i know brian runs a, a really nice uh, uh, digital ad agency in, in San Jose and wrote a book called Shareology. And he has a really engaged followers and huge numbers on Twitter. And whenever he checks into a hotel or something, if he says something nice about the hotel, they send him a basket with, with you know, if he says something like I had an issue or a problem and mentions a brand, boom, they're like right there. And so there was this conversation about, is that because of the number of followers that you have? And it was really interesting to see that some of these particular brands or companies or whatever tend to respond that way, whether somebody has 50 followers or 5,000 followers or 50,000 followers. And I think those are the smartest brands. Those are the, the smartest people out there that are, are just aware that anybody can be an advocate and anybody can be an enemy. Mm -hmm. You, you know, one of the, I, mean, I experienced the same thing and I, I never experienced it before. And I unfortunately think it has to do with the followers. So they don't do it with, with everyone because I never experienced this before that brands like Lufthansa when I'm flying or United, you know, every time I'm flying now and I'm, 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 I'm doing something with a hashtag or, or something like that, they say, oh, thank you. I hope you like the movie and so on. It's like, what? Just Lufthansa told me, like, uh, I hope that you like the movie I watched and so on. <laughs> I don't know if they really just did this for the last six months and they just started a new program. So they do it with everyone. Mm. I experienced it first time also with a hotel and so on. Everyone, you, everywhere you go, the more followers you have, and maybe also because I'm verified on Twitter, I don't know what their algorithm is behind it. 
But at least I experience the same thing on Twitter that that most of the cases when I tweet about something, I get a feedback. So and it wasn't it wasn't the individual who knew you. You felt like it was uh, something that they were told to do by the by the company. I don't know. I mean, what, how is it for you? Is it for you the same thing when you check in somewhere and you tweet about it? You always get like a, a, a feedback about it. I, I haven't flown honestly since Meerkat and Periscope came out, so I, I don't know as of recent. But it'd be interesting now to see if that has any influence on it. Definitely. You know, By the way, think- today, 100 days on Blab, I just noticed. Woo! So oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> nice. you know, one, of the, one of the things, going back to what Alex said, you know, the numbers and stuff like that. And Alex will remember because we were both at Summit. And when Tasman gave her keynote, and hers is more about scope for good and about causes. And she talked about when she went into, um, she had some moles and stuff like that. So she went to a uh, dermatologist doctor to check for biopsies and stuff like that. She scoped the whole thing, showing the tools and and everything else. She got an email back from one person and specifically that it gave that person the nerve to call up a doctor and make an appointment for herself because she's been worried for two years about similar things. And, you know, it brings the point that you know, whether it's business, whether it's scope for good, whether it's personal, whether anything that's out there, every time we hit broadcast or we come on Blab or we go on a Meerkat or anything like that, you can be changing one person's life. And that's sure. more important than the other numbers because you could just give the nerve to somebody else to be doing something. That's sure, how sure. I'm looking at it. When Tasman told that story, I mean, Alex, you were there for that. So. When I heard that story, I was I had chills. I was like, I can't believe she, you know, and, and you know, I think Tasman was fine. There was nothing wrong. I don't know about the other woman, but um, it was amazing. It was just, there wasn't, you know, everybody was just like in awe listening to her. And I mean, go on to catch.me and just type in Tasman, Lucia, a uh, keynote speaker. You can probably catch it on somebody's uh, and catch the replay, but it just shows everybody is an influencer that hits start broadcast. You just don't know who you're talking to. True. There's another. There's another example um, of the person who who won this year or last year the competition of um, free speech. I mean, like holding a speech, and it was like the the name of his speech was the power of words. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I haven't seen and that one. It's it's pretty cool. You should you should check it up on on YouTube. Uh, it's called the power of words, and he explains a story of a friend of him where. This friend was always like addicted to compliments from his father because he never got them. And so he was working very hard at school to finally get a big compliment from his father and finding like that kind of love. And he managed to have like a a very good final exam. And he called his father and said like, so listen, dad, I, I just passed my exam and I had a very good mark. So are you proud of me? And the father just turned on him and said, like, well, listen, I don't have time right now. Let's talk about it another day. Hmm. And that single sentence, like that word, like he doesn't have time right now, made him start drinking alcohol, taking drugs, wasting probably his his life. And he said, like, so he turned on him and said, like, so why why do you do it? I mean, you just finished everything. You can go to university. You have everything you need, you know. And he said, like, well, there is only one person I really care for, and this person doesn't care for me. So in my eyes, I'm not worth anything. And so he ended up in hospital because of a car accident, and he died. And that was the end of the story of what what he sold. So that shows, like, the power of words and maybe caring for that one person, what you also said, Robert, right? Mm -hmm. That can change, that you can change maybe only one person's life, but... Maybe you change really the life of them in your broadcast because he's stopping by. He has a bad time. He comes in and you give him a nice feeling. You care for him and you can do something. And this is beautiful. I mean, those are the stories I really like to share because that's what we all should do. Like giving other people a a beautiful, beautiful, motivational uh, feeling. And it happens in business too. I mean, you know, I did that scope last night. JS, you were in it. And I know uh, Yvonne's in the room and she's listening to this whole thing. And she's like, oh, my God, I got to change my whole entire way. I do my scopes and my stuff now because that's the way. And it was funny. uh, Tony, I don't know if you were in the beginning, JS, when I did the ETAs and Tony started off as part of it with me. 
she used it this morning and she's like, oh my God, I got total engagement after doing the thing. So it's like the fact that I was able to help her and now she's getting engagement, which may lead to business. Now, now, now to there's an, an interesting thing. I mean, essentially, we were we just refer to that as building in your call to action. Uh, right. Although now, now I do another thing in in social media, which is I respond to the unwritten calls to action that individuals have sometimes. Mm -hmm. So this is my kind of thing where it it goes along. Brian and I have known each other for years, so give 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 get is kind of the way both of us think and a lot of these people out there who are influencers i help them i tell you know i give them mm -hmm. advice and things like that nobody does i know it's it's a, mm -hmm. it's an interesting different thing so if you look you see there are a lot of people out there and they may not be formulating what it is they need but if you get to know people uh, you can get a sense of, wow, this person needs something, I think, or maybe I can communicate with them and get a sense of what they need, and you can address that. And and that's that's a, another thing about community. I mean, it used to come very natural. You, you know, when I was a little kid, I couldn't get away with anything because any adult could basically haul off and hit me, and my mother would thank them. That was, that was just the way it was. Mm-hmm. And I think going into what Alex said, it's uh, you got to be careful too. It could it could go the other way? You know, you could also have a negative influence on someone's life. So you know, we have to really be careful with what we say, and you know, not be discriminating or you know whatever it may be, because you could very easily uh, you know change someone's life into the other direction. So it goes both ways on that note. Well, oh, yeah. and that and that happens from saying not that you disagree with someone, but that you can say my experience is different from yours. Yeah. And it's okay to disagree. Yeah. I mean, it's okay to agree that you disagree. I mean, we've said it a thousand times. You don't have to agree on every. Listen, no. I, I don't. Not everybody believes in everything, a single thing that I say, the way that social no. media could be done is the only way to do it. I, I mean, it's not the way life is. There's tons of ways. There's tons of people that are successful that do the total opposite of me. Oh. And how I'm boring would it be if we all agreed? <laughs> My uncle used oh, to God. say there's probably a hundred different ways you can trip on a banana peel. Choo choo. I'm trying to count them. So <laughs> what do you, what do, you guys, do you guys think that this uh, is going to grow as much as the potential that all of us have wanted to? Do you guys think it will continue to take off? As I far do. as I'm concerned, go on, Robert. No, I'm saying I do. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, it's all about conversations it's all about collaboration it's all about talking with people and i think you know the times have changed where people want to be involved with other people um you know the reason this didn't happen five six years ago when when streaming was going on back then we didn't have the technology that could support it we weren't even up to 3g yet i think we were still at 1g five years ago um, we needed it to be 3G, 4G coming out, and now I'm hearing 5G is on its way, which is going to make live streaming even easier. Um, you know, the technology wasn't there, and that's why I think the boom is starting in with the periscopes, the meerkats, the blabs will be hopefully more secure on the phones, which are going to be interesting to do traveling more now. Um, but people want that. You know, we, we said it earlier. There are people that don't like leaving their house. There are people that are very much an introvert, especially in public. I know people that don't like being in crowds, but they'll jump on this stuff and talk away with people because they're in their sure. space. And and sure. I think it's just going to grow further and further and further. Well, what did uh, someone said? Blab just got better. Linked insights. Blab, Blab <laughs> just got better. Cosby Slayer. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're improving. All the time that that's by well, basically i think where he's okay. like pointing um they're, they're making improvements they will come out for android at some day so then it will be possible on on basically all smartphones that would be a big breakthrough for for them too but they want to optimize their ios app first which makes sense before they duplicate a maybe error or bug or something which just doesn't work out so well it does they're taking their time and it's good I don't There's think it makes sense, though. Huh? The most used phone is not the iOS platform. 
So I don't. Well, I always don't understand Android. why it's being the most sort of because you know, iOS fine. is earlier adapters, and iOS people will pay for things more than Android people will. You also have That's to true. remember when people, if you notice, ninety percent of the apps that come out, they all come out on iOS first. Not because of the volume, not because of anything else. It's easier to develop an app on the iOS platform because it's pretty much one or two developing things they need to do for it. Yeah. Where when you're working with an Android, there's different four things. different processing things that you need to work around and different sizes, all the different platforms. That's why when, it, when an app goes out updated on, on, a, on an Android, it's a rolling update. Mm -hmm. There are people that have it on an Android and other people are still waiting for it three days later because it's not in their Google store yet. Or three months yeah. later. So, so it's not, and it is Google is Android is the bigger version out there. It is more popular with all the systems and everything, but the developers have a hard time working with it. It takes a lot more time to get through the, because it, it's not just the operating system. There's another system I know that's very hard to work with. I'm trying to remember which one it is. Um, but there's like two or three systems they got to work around where iOS it's one or two and they're done. Well, it, it it has a lot to do. I mean, I had a I had a mobile app company before, so I I founded an app. So we went through all those decisions strategically, like why to start with iOS or why to start with Android. And as as Robert says, and uh, it's like this: all those reasons both of you basically said are true. And when it comes down to different devices, I mean, there's like an iPhone five, six, and six S with like three different sizes kind of, and you have like 90% of the market of iOS, you know, with Android, there are up to 5,000 different devices. So that's a lot, 5,000 different devices. Of course, you are just optimizing it on the, on the, on the top 20 or, or 50. You don't go for all 5,000, but it makes it, it makes it really, really complicated when it comes down to Android. Well, did you and, work with Android studio at all when you were developing? No, we were we were not. I think we had we had one iOS developer and one Android developer. So I don't know. I've, just, I've talked with developers and they say it's changed quite a bit in the last year or two. That uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I sold my company September two thousand and fourteen, so it's more than more than a year ago. So I don't know what was like the progress. We were thinking about those um, platforms which you do like with Java and it works out on everything, mm -hmm. and you can build up apps phone gap for example is one system it's not native but it, it works out for some things but i mean there's there's a steady progress the the, the good thing about having like an an advertisement agency focusing on mobile app developing is mm. that you every time a new update comes out a new ios version you have something to do it's really it's really a good business because it's always not working. If iOS 9 comes, you can be sure that all advertising agencies focusing on mobile app developing, they have a ton of stuff to do because you need to keep up with. And there come new sizes of the phone. So yeah. it's a good business model. I think I it's know. give or and take it's... on both. The getting into the Apple App Store is, is not an easy feat. True. Sure. Yeah, and Android, you can pretty much just pop whatever you want in there. And I think it's great that it works in the browser. I mean, I feel like, you know, the Android, the Apple app has had so many glitches that, you know, does it work in the Chrome browser on an Apple phone too? Or does not? I, Why is that? I've I never tried it. Huh? I've tried it. I can't get it to work. On the Apple I guess yeah, I've never tried using the, the camera. thing because I use the blab beta. I use the blab beta in the beginning, and now I use the blab app. Though I tend to use the beta more still because the the beta is more updated. Where the app, it's going to yeah. take time to filter into the store. So there's a blab beta app, and then a blab app. Before or... it was released on uh, the Apple Store, there was a blab beta that they gave out to many to to to, to some people. Okay. I still use it. Yeah, I, still have I, I use it. Ten, I, I, because the only thing is, I have the six. I didn't go to the six S. You know, I had a four, then I went to the six. I mean, that's how long I held on to my Apple. I know the six S and the six S plus, and all those guys are out. I'll wait for the seven or eight. I mean, my six is doing fine considering it's barely a year old. Yeah, I will, um, 
go on blab and I tend to stay on listen only. I don't jump into a blab so fast with my six because after five to six minutes being in the seat, I start to slow down. I get the freezing. I get the slow down and stuff like that. So I try not to be on my phone on it. I want, I want, hopefully it'll get stabilized in the next month or two. And then I can start to do that and be on the road on a blab. But otherwise I'm on my tab. I, I'm, I do this every single one of my blabs, except for the first one I was on is on my surface Two tablet. This is the camera for the tablet, everything. And it, it's never had a problem for me. I had to do that with my Android too. If I was streaming on Meerkat, um, I was, I had literally put a little ice pack with a towel onto the back of it because after about 15, 20 minutes or so, the phone yeah. gets so hot that it actually can go into the overheating you know, mode. And Periscope used to do that also to phones. There were people, their phones were heating up bad. It's it's it gets hot. I mean, to the point where you you know it's. I mean, yeah, you can hold it onto your skin, but you can. It's definitely uncomfortable after a while, to where it seems a little dangerous for your for your phone just to melt any second. But I mean, I have the six, and I went to Summit, and I got this one, which is a two and a half uh, phone charger. It'll mm-hmm. charge up my phone for two and a half charges. I had this at a hundred percent. The first day of Summit started at about 8.15, 8.30-ish. The keynotes went on. By 12.30, both were dead, and I had to charge them. Both of them. Yeah. Because I was scoping, you know, on my catch. I got all the keynotes. I was scoping them. But the problem was, I mean, I mean, that's like three phones. And that's that's something I, I started doing really early on um, on mine is is I know I don't know if you could still do it with Meerkat now or with Periscope, but I know with Blab is I I just basically turn the phone off to where, you know, I'm just talking into it. It's just a black screen. And that way I'm not even sucking all that, you know, video energy. And it's not needing to process that. Or, you know, you can always uh, just hold down. I know I don't know if all phones do this, but I just hold down the uh, back button. It pulls up a side menu and I could just pull up applications on top of it. And just by covering up the video and not letting it run it, I never had that overheating problem again. But I guess for four different video streams, it's quite a lot to take in for the little phone. Anybody else have any uh, advice in the audience for? Yeah, I'm actually uh, going to uh, um, take off. Uh, if people would be so kind and do uh, tell a little bird, and um, and don't forget to follow Robert and Alex and and Jens in here. Um, and Jan yes. Gilbertson. For here, uh, you, <laughs> I'm I'm not worthy. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. It's worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those hand symbols are really oh, for. Oh, Bill Cosby Slayer. You had to do it. I've been here for like six hours. Oh, my goodness. I got 1,300 props. You've been here for a half an hour, Robert. You got 3,500. Okay, there you go. You got even more than Alex. I find that hard to believe. More props That's true. than I'll Alex. Another oh, one for you. Thank you. Robert, what mistake did you make there? Um, <laughs> That's a good question. I, uh, I, I, I said something to a young friend of mine on Periscope. Um, she was doing a scope, and she was talking about how women can help themselves in the early days of Periscope, like eight tips for women for broadcasting. And I kind of chimed in on the seventh or eighth one in her Periscope. And then by the time the, eight, the last one came up, it was if women would wear a push-up bra, it would help their support with their shoulders and posture. And I'm in the room, so I made the nice comment of saying, well, that's kind of hard for me to do, Jilly Sue. You know, I, I'm not going to put, you know, it's not going to help my posture. You know, it's kind of hard. So she came back at me uh, uh, with her smart mouth because we're both smart asses. And um, said, well, you know, we'll just have to get you one and, so I said, well, if you send me one, I'll wear it on Periscope. Well, guess what showed up two weeks later on my doorstep? Oh, no. But the worst part was she took her Periscope two days later, and she went to Walmart at midnight with 200 people on her phone picking it out for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was an was- advertised event. <laughs> Yeah, so so it showed up. I waited till my daughter was not home and was at her mom's house because I'm divorced because I just didn't see at 11 o'clock at night my daughter coming out and seeing that, want to put her in therapy for the rest of her life. 
Um, and I put it on and I kept my promise and I went on to Periscope. I think I had over a thousand people in the room because <laughs> they had like a pre-prep party getting up for the 11 o'clock show. And I did it. And it's been haunting me since because there is probably about 150 screenshots and gifs and out there. So occasionally I show up in a room and then I say something. And if I say something smart ass to somebody, it shows back up. There it is. They think they're going to shut me up, but they're not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, there's so many of those out there. But yeah, I must admit, I have a large collection of screenshots and gifs going across Meerkat, Periscope and Blab that... You know, I've saved over the years for if someone really is an a-hole to me, then um, I'll, I'll, I'll whip those out or something like that. But I think nowadays everybody's got one of those on there. So if it really came down to it, we could probably all, you know, have a screenshot battle with each other. But well, that's, that's really not fun. have to remember about, stream, about live streaming now or Blab or any of these things. Anything can be screenshot and recorded. And if I'm a photographer. Out there I sit getting, on Photoshop. You're getting drunk and showing up on this stuff. You can't complain if it shows up somewhere else. Yeah. It, unfortunately, it, it makes me behave a little bit more than I'd like to. Yeah. That's why I feel like those we were talking about earlier before you guys joined, we were talking about what happens, you know, kind of after the Blab team goes to sleep here. And, um, you know, they there's been a lot sleep. of bullying. They never sleep. Well, I mean, you know, whatever, there's when they're not watching for three yeah. seconds, but... You know, it, there's been some kind of bullying. There's been harassment things later at night. Um, certain, you know, podcasts or television shows that have moved over here and brought some a little bit more explicit content have raised a little bit of controversy. Um, you know, so I'd, I'd kind of like to ask the three of you, how do you guys feel like um, that could be better regulated and, and to what point should it be regulated? Maybe you want to start, JS? We'll go around or something. Uh the first part of that again? Uh, um, should, how should, um, you know, kind of this bullying or this kind of, you know, more explicit content on this right, public okay. platform be regulated and how? Well, I it spoke to that before. The, the, the problem is inherent within the structure of social media as I see it. So you don't have accountability. Anybody can go and make a Twitter account, say who, whatever they want and come in here over and over and over and over again. Is that the fault of Blab? No, it's not the fault of Blab. It's the fault of social media. When as many as 20, 25% of all LinkedIn accounts, Twitter accounts, and Facebook accounts are, are actually fake accounts, then we have a big issue within social media. And that that is a big part of the first problem. And as I said before, if you linked everything to some sort of an accountability, which would be charging people five bucks a year or a dollar a year to belong to Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, then you have accountability. We know who those people are. Every time they come in and they create an account, they have to link it to some sort of live currency, whatever, transaction service, and they would have control over which ones it could be. So there would have to be accountability attached to it. And I think that is what we're, we're missing in, in, in uh, social media 1.0 or whatever the heck you want to call it. And, and that would be a big step in terms of getting rid of a lot of the problems, the, the, the headaches that are out there. You're still going to have people out there who are going to spend five bucks a year and decide they want to be a-holes. You're not going to be able to stop that. But you will be able to patrol that and better take care of them. In a way, it'd be like if people could just run rampant and go through red lights, and then when they get stopped by a cop, they could just hand them a different license every time. That's <laughs> kind of what, what social media is like now. So uh, that, that to me would be the major step. Is it possible that it's going to happen? Uh, probably not in my lifetime, but who knows? I, I, I'm a believer it's, it's community-based. You know, um, I get the past three weeks i've had nine people or one person nine times we don't know yet um who's used variations of my name there was a robert c stem there was a robot c stern there oh, was, yeah, yeah. and there's been nine of them already js and i think it's the same person because they keep getting kicked out because people are telling me who they are what blab they're in i'm getting their profile then i take their profile i give it to Brittany. 
and Brittany just blocks them from blab. But the problem is it's it's just like getting habit for me. So like now I'm just ignoring it a little bit. The ones that I'm getting upset about, they're saying, you know, one's like, oh, but we were doing this because we love you. And I said, but if you love me so much and it bothers me, why are you still doing it? You know, I'm yeah. telling you, I don't want you to do it. And, oh, I'm sorry, but think of it this way. No, I don't want to. So now you get blocked. Yeah. So we don't know who's behind it um, or if it's multiple people. Who knows? But, you know, something, it's community-based. So, I, you know, a lot of people, I'll get DMs middle of the day or middle of the night. There was a robot C stem uh, showing up. They were pretending to be you. Here's the link and stuff, you know. So, but that's a community thing to me. They're letting me know that somebody's doing that stuff. Or if I see a problem with something going on in a room, I'll bring in Jason. I'll bring in Brittany and say, hey, yeah. we got a problem here. Take care of it. And they do. So yes. the community is, is, is basically using the platform. We're using it for business. We're using it for fun. We're using it for open mic nights and entertainment and all this great stuff. But we're also keeping an eye on our own community, like a neighborhood watch. Yeah, I just had to boot that guy who just would not stop typing Alex, 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 or I think he was just yeah, Alex, he, in the very beginning. But going on with that, I checked out the Twitter. There's only like two tweets on yeah, it. Yeah, it was like an empty Twitter and an empty egg. That green so. egg, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, Queen X. I mean, they were trying when, to get your attention, and I, I checked out the Twitter name. It was just <laughs> made the Twitter name. There you go, Let Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's what we're talking about is basically trolls in all kinds of ways, and that was actually the the, the latest broadcast I had on Periscope too. Like, what we should do? Like, oh my God, like trolls are in my scope. So, what should I do? I mean. I'm myself not too much concerned about it because I'm happy that I have lovely followers. And even if there is a troll, I just ignore it. You know, if it comes to my scope, it's there. Usually that those, those trolls are basically striving for attention. They want to get something out of it. And if you don't give it to them, they just leave again, you know? So if just, just, just don't care. Of course, when someone is impersonating you, it's something else. I mean, usually you can write a message to Twitter or to Blob or to Periscope and they take care of it. Right. So this is, this is also not, not a problem. And um, what, what really bothers me in this whole topic is that whole gender thing, that there are really a lot of women which get all those sexual harassment comments all the time and some of them are afraid of even trying it to scope, although there's like a lovely message behind it. They're not doing it because, so, because they say like, I don't want to have it. And others stop it because they are bothered by it and saying like, well, that's, you know, excuse me to say the word, but that's fucked up, you know, to, to have something like this. And this is a serious problem, yeah. especially on Periscope. I don't know about Blab in this thing. I think the other community is, is a little bit more either way controlled or it's not so big and that's why it's yeah. not happening or maybe because of those four people yeah. they feel like we're in a community and that's why someone else is not doing to press it the other thing is like one-on-one -on -one. maybe that's one one point of it i don't know it is, but that's something what's really bothering it is me. happening on blab because uh, there's a friend of mine who's in blab right now and she's in this blab sam with the green background um mm -hmm. she just had to go change a whole bunch of stuff because she started getting stalked by somebody from blab but there is a little bit more oh, accountability here. They were calling her daughter's phone. They found it. They would do, I mean, really wow. bad stuff. The, you know, here you at least have to make an account to log in to type something in the chat. So there's a little bit more accountability, I feel like, here than in general. I mean, yeah, you can make a fake name and all that, but you so far it's been a smaller Twitter. community. I, I just haven't seen yeah. it as much in here yet as as I have on the on the other platforms. But some of the best, you know, streams that I had at the very beginning were of photo shoots where I took the stream along and was able to, you know, and in this case, they happened to be one that was on the beach with a bikini and the other one in a nice evening dress. And of course, you know, kind of sex sells. And in this case, yeah, these streams brought in a lot of people. But as soon as the one incident happened where the model I was photographing saw on the stream where someone wrote, show me your, you know, your boobs, it was like over after that. The model lost all focus from the photo shoot. It was pissed off about, you know, all that. And I never did it again because it killed the entire shoot. So 
you know, that kind, that's kind of a bummer. Like, I wish that was regulated more because I'd love to kind of do more behind the scenes stuff like that. I'll tell you, as far as the community policing, I, I yeah, it's been it's been great. But when you have people that are coming on here uh, and we're getting some interesting people, my friend Mark Fidelman, who writes for Forbes magazine, just did a blab the other day and that's going up on his Forbes site. So it's hard to say what would happen if, you know, if trolls got in there. Uh, he's probably editing out the uh, the side panels. But, you know, if you want people to sit and you don't you don't necessarily know who they are, if, if that is your particular business blab or blab, um, you know, it could be very problematic. Um, you know, it inter inter interrupts your entire uh, presentation or something like that. Or even if you're just I could imagine. Were you were you rattled when you were talking and you're giving information? And you're looking on the side and you're seeing these idiots up there with you know impersonator handles or things like that. Robert, did I was it pissed off? Yeah, oh, okay. I was like, you know, I you know what it was? If they just came in to harass me, I wouldn't care. But they were going into other people's rooms. They were trying to get into chairs at Grant Cardone. They oh. were. I mean, now you're playing with my name, and my name is my life. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't put the business name up here. I'm doing it under my personal name. So, you know, now it's a different story. You know, you, you're trying to, you're trying to, I mean, they said one of them was in Grant oh. Cardone's room and they were like, hey, Grant, it's Rob, it's Rob, it's Rob. And it's like, they knew it wasn't because right. they don't have my picture. Let's all watch out. Vinny Blabberino's here. <laughs> I was just going to say, that's where it becomes dangerous. You know, these people aren't just coming into your room and messing it with, around with it then. They're going into other places and representing you, you know, falsely. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's part of the community. We have to work together, you know, for, for all the type of things. You see somebody harassing uh, another scoper, you, you, you need to work as a community to help it. Agree. We would know very quickly if it wasn't you popping on camera. <laughs> yeah, well, you need the red wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the red wall. The worst part is I'm probably going to be moving soon. Uh, I'm like, do I have? To, I, I better go get a can of this paint because if I if I don't have that on my new wall, people are going to be like, who is it? Yeah, where is the the Beverly Hillbillies uh, drapes? Oh God, they're right there. Okay, <laughs> they're right there. I just gotta, I just gotta show this. Like, I'm sure some people have realized it, but I'm just so amused by the fact that I think it. I would say at least ten or twelve people now have complimented my recording studio behind me, and uh, so I just thought that was completely hilarious because I could just go over into the kitchen real quick and hang out over here with my oh green my screen. Oh my god! <laughs> I had to give what it away at some point, huh? What do you have a green screen? Ready, he's ready. Many cam on top of Wirecast. <laughs> oh my god! Look at this. That's awesome. It's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just I laughing. I kept seeing it. Like, oh, use so it on desktop. Seriously, it would make things much more entertaining. That is funny. Yeah. See, but that kitchen looks fake behind you. Yeah, that the recording the studio, studio looked, looked real. Crazy. That looks fake. Yeah, that's true. This looks pretty real right here. This one, I, I did this one yesterday, and it looked real. And then someone, after a while, was like, "Why isn't that dude behind you ever move?" Like, <laughs> 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 so I tried you know, sitting. You like have this. one that shows like outer space, or <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's funny. You have like a picture of like Chewbacca behind you with Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Hey, Jens, um, did you have any idea how long we're going to keep doing this for? <laughs> well, I'm actually going to get off. I'm going to turn because it's seven so, thirty. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to actually cut the recording now. Um, we could have kind of an after thing. I want to thank you guys all for um stopping in and everything and everybody in the chat too. I think it was a great discussion um that we had. A lot of good information exchanged. Yeah. Um, if you missed some of the beginning, there was also um some other uh panelists that came through. So, um, thank you guys all in the uh, yeah. Chip, chip, cheerio. But uh, yeah, we'll hang out, but I'm just going to stop.